Hello, folks. Welcome to another Levine Electronics and Electrics <clears throat> lunchtime webinar. We're so happy you have joined us today. Uh, we are a manufacturer's rep firm specializing in, in power and controls. Uh, today, we're very lucky to have uh, with us uh, Christian. Uh, I'm going to try this. Payer? Pilot. Pilot. Okay. Sorry. I. Uh, did, I did my best. So uh, I hope everyone will um, enjoy this um, webinar. Uh, your phones are currently in, uh, everyone is muted, but if you press the button on, uh, I believe it's the lower left-hand corner of your screen, uh, you can raise your hand and we can unmute uh, some phones and hopefully engage in a, a productive dialogue. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Christian. Okay, thank you very much for introducing me and thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to talk about challenges of starting high torque motors with IGBT based MV soft starter. Um, first of all, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Christian Pilot. I'm working for the Solcon company um, as an area manager for the territory of Europe. And I'm with the company now for four years. And before that, I was um, always in motor companies. Big portion of my business life was with the Siemens company, where I was 22 years. Then I was with ATB, later known as Wolong, uh, for another four years. And now, since four years ago, I'm happy to work with Solcon, and it's really uh, giving me a great deal of fun. Um, what will we talk about today? Um, first of all, I have to give you some details about our company, a little bit about our portfolio. This will not take too long. And then comes, let's say, the main part of the presentation. What are the challenging of starting of large motors in the weak networks? And ultimately, the solution of this, uh, the best solution, the King's class of solutions here will be IGBT starting which is the answer to most of the questions and challenging challenges here. Um, this will be the drive start, which will be the third part of the presentation. Okay, some words about our company. Um, Solcon is over 40 years old. They have a hell of a lot of experience in starting electric motors. I know Solcon from a personal business life from uh, more than 20 years ago when we in Siemens were looking for a reputable uh, partner in medium voltage soft starters and Solcon were the first ones who tried to go from low voltage soft starters to medium voltage soft starters and they possess about a lot of experience in that Field. And uh, Siemens ultimately chose Solcon as the partner for medium voltage soft starters. Good, we do have global manufacturing. We are manufacturing in three different sites in the world. We have two, two subsidiaries and we are working as we are a relatively small company with partners, more than 100 uh, to be precise. What are we doing? Uh, we are doing soft starters in medium voltage and low voltage, some details to follow later, motor control and motor protection. And we have over 250,000 successful installations and our reference book is a book that thick uh, in uh, legal format. So many, many references in all countries, uh, most, most of the countries in the world. So what do we cover? Um, we entirely um, serve the entire food chain here, which is coming from R&D, the engineering, the production. Pre-sales and marketing is important. The sales is uh, important. And once the product is installed, uh, we also do after sales support. That is not so much in terms of uh, reactive service because our products normally do not require service, but for instance, when it is coming to commissioning and similar and likewise activities. Um, we are um, 
certified and uh, global and we are adhering to many international standards and what you see on the picture in the world map is uh, a lot of uh, our installations um, worldwide. Um, here you see a small selection uh, of customers. Many of our customers are motor vendors like the Siemens and the ABB and the GE, but also system integrators, OEMs, machine builders, and in some cases also end clients. The latter you will find mostly when it is coming, let's say, to retrofit projects that the customer has a certain problem with a motor where he needs a solution. In this case, we are dealing with this end customer. Normally, we are selling to resellers. And as I said, it's uh, largely motor manufacturers, OEMs and system integrators. OK, um, what is our portfolio? Um, I mentioned before medium voltage soft starters. Uh, the title for us in Solcon is HRVSTN or LGBT starters, what, which we will talk about later, which is called Drive Start. Beyond that, we are doing also low voltage products, which is soft starters, uh, RVSTN, iStart, AX, AXO. You can read later on in the presentation what is this about. We also do DC injection brakes called soul brakes. Um, imagine you have a tool machine which you need to break immediately after you press the off button and you do not want to uh, the machine to run for too long time. So you are breaking this by injecting DC current into the asynchronous motor and it, it will break in shortest time. Also part of our portfolio is protection relays for motor protection. Normally we do not sell these as a single item, sometimes to switch gear vendors, but in most cases they come along with the soft starters that we are selling into the market. One topic that we are selling in the market and offering is thyristor controllers for heaters in low voltage and medium voltage. And the nice thing here is a heater has a very long time constant. So in order to control the heat in the process, you are switching on, you are switching off and on and off. But the vacuum contactors do not like the high frequency switching. So the uh, means of choice here is thyristor controllers for this. Good. Um, going to the uh, medium voltage soft starters, what you see here is our HRVSDN product. Uh, here in the middle, you see something where you have here a soft starter and three motor feeders, which is called a uh, multi start. In principle, it consists, let's say, in the medium voltage part of the low voltage part, which you see here with the open door, the power module with the thyristors, a control module, and one device, which is called EPTTX, to which I will come in a moment. Here you see again the power chassis with the thyristors um, as, a, as a cut out and the ratings for these classic soft starters, I would call them goes from 2.3 up to 15 kV in the voltage. And we can do up to 48 megawatt um, for starting motors of that size. It's for heavy duty. And they also have a data logger integrated, which is part of our offering. Uh, one word to the EPT TX, what you see here on the picture. It's a specialty. This is uh, a measuring device which is mounted in the medium voltage uh, compartment. And here, the three green devices here, this is where this is mounted on the medium voltage bus bars. From there, you detect um, the voltage and you give the voltage signal and the information about voltage current and temperature via fiber optics to the low voltage compartment. The nice thing about this is that there is absolute galvanic isolation between the medium voltage and low voltage compartment. There is no connection in between, which gives you additional safety. Okay, you could say a CT or a VT itself is a galvanic connection but it can give you an uncomfortable feeling if you have a wire going from the medium voltage to the low voltage compartment. And with this device, this is completely excluded. Also, it is connected by fiber optics to the data logger. 
And one nice thing about this is with this device, you can kind of cheat the soft starter and make it believe he sees 6 kV voltage, where in fact it's only 400 volt connected. And you can do a full low voltage test and a full parameterization of the soft starter while utilizing low voltage. And this is really time saving when talking about commissioning of a soft starter. Because you know you need special people, especially trained people to work on the medium voltage and switching on and off the medium voltage is taking time. Doing this in advance with the low voltage is a, a big advantage here. And we have the IGBT based soft starter. Um, just some rough facts here. In 6 kV, we can go up to 8.5 MBA rating of this uh, starter. And this is in principle for applications that require, require really low starting current and or a high starting torque. Because with the other soft starter, this is excluded by physics. And I will come to this a uh, little later. When we are going higher in voltage, we have the drive start too, which is uh, having voltages of up to 11 kV and goes up to 18.5 MVA starting power of the starter, which means in principle, you can start motors of 50 megawatt and larger because in such high ratings, what you normally have is an unloaded starting of the compressor or the pump. In this size, you do not start pumps or compressor with a full torque. This gives you a reduction in operational cost. This has touch screen maintenance, and a simple wiring scheme to which I come later. Okay, this was a little bit about the um, portfolio, what we are offering. And now we are coming to the second topic, which is the challenges of starting of large motors and weak networks. Um, imagine you have a guy in the switch gear room and he wants to switch on a motor in a remote location. And what should not happen is when switching on that he's getting a blackout. Um, okay, this is looking a little bit funny. Anybody out there lighting a candle? But as you all know, with having blackouts, small scale, big scale, this has effects on anything. Healthcare, IT, transport, energy supply, banking, water supply, telecommunication, media, etc. Imagine only now if we are uh, having this um, seminar and somebody in my neighborhood is doing a wrong start and I have a blackout and my um, power supply is gone. And we would reassemble maybe in 10 minutes when power is being back, but all of us would have wasted 10 minutes of time and you can calculate what this is, meaning in terms of billable hours per each of us. So we must avoid this. So what we need to do, we need to apply sound engineering that we avoid unfinished motor starts due to protectionally relays trippings. Um, we must avoid that their processes are being tripped due to too low voltage levels and rebooting complex IT systems is a, taking very long time. And this reduces massively plant and process availability. So what to do? Um, first of all, we need to make sure um, that we start up the motors um, properly. And we have two issues. One is we need to start up our process. Um, what if not? This could mean we do not have, what you see here on this gra graph is the starting torque of a motor at full 100% voltage or at reduced voltage. And here you see the torque speed curve of the driven machine. Here in this, the two curves meet and the motor will stop here. When the motor is stopping here at 0 0.7 uh, uh, or 70% of the speed, you still have a high uh, starting current over five times. And this means if this is applied for too long time, um, the rotor will burn and you have uh, quite a damage on the motor, um, which will cost a lot of money. What you also need to take into consideration is you need to take care of the starting time. It needs to be within reasonable limits. And 
starting time is a proportional to the total inertia and to the speed, but also um, inverse proportional to the acceleration torque. So if the gap here between the or between the motor torque and the torque speed curve of the driven machine is too low, starting time is too long. And uh, it's helping nobody if the starting time, the calculated is two minutes and the time speed curve of the motor say maximum 45 uh, seconds. So also this has to be taken into consideration. You have to ensure a successful start. Um, secondly, what is important, as I said, you have two issues. One is um, you need to have minimum torque that the driven machine is uh, started properly. On the other hand, you need to protect the network because that is what soft starting is about. You need to protect the network with a maximum current. And in many cases, these two requirements contradict each other. And we need to find a good solution for this that both requirements can be met. And if this is being done, you and customers have process safety. Okay, we have to make a small excursion into the theory. What you see here on the left-hand side is, uh, let's say the grid, circuit breaker and a starting motor. And electrical engineering um, means you have to apply the law of Kirchhoff and you have to transfer all the network components into reactances, um, respectively inductance uh, values. And the higher the inductance value here, the weaker the network, um, the higher the starting current of a motor is, uh, the higher the re uh, reactance here. And what you want to have is a low voltage here and a high voltage here. And you have to manipulate um, the reactances of the network and the motor, or let's say the motor solution in a way that you achieve a maximum voltage drop on this side. Otherwise you will get into problems. You want to reduce the voltage drop here in the grid and increase um, uh, the grid voltage here. You want to reduce the starting current and maybe to uh, optimize the reactance proportions. So this can be done with various uh, means and these are as follows. In 95% of the cases you see direct online and with this most customers are happy but if not you have various means of reducing the starting current. The most common means of reducing starting current is a star delta starter. Then you can do something on the motor, which is either wound rotor motor or slip ring motor, as we say here, a low starting current motor. Then you can apply a starting reactor or an auto transformer. Or here you have the means of electronic soft starters, which is the classic soft starter where you are redu reducing the voltage or frequency start, which is the IGBT starting. Okay, direct online, it's clear, is the simplest form, um, less cost, uh, usually five to seven times full load current. With this, you have high transient torques and current. And for instance, if you have a network of 100 MVA, uh, minimum short circuit power, 6.5 uh, um, starting current, 3 megawatt motor. This would reduce in a 18% voltage drop. Normally customers do not accept this and want to have something done about it. Um, you have um, reduced voltage starting where you will first connect in uh, star and later on in uh, triangle. This is mainly for uh, Low voltage, not applicable, let's say, for the, for the medium voltage. Uh, it is fixed. You have the starting voltage here, 58%. And here you have the full starting voltage. And with it comes a large reduction in uh, starting current, uh, uh, starting torque, and also here in current. If it works, it's fine. But in most cases, for medium voltage, not a viable option. Um, then I mentioned the slippering motor. 
here we have to do a little bit excursion into the electrical theory. What you see here is a simplified equivalent circuit diagram of the asynchronous machine. What is important to remember is that the motor torque during starting is proportional to I square rotor resistance. So if you do not have possibility to increase the motor starting current due to the reasons of the network, you can, uh, you can increase the rotor resistance by connecting external resistors via slip rings to the motor. And here you see, let's say with, uh, with more and more resistance in the rotor, the curve of the asynchronous starting is bent to the left side. And you have then here this kind of starting torque and current. And this, is, this can help you in very um, severe cases. But it comes along with high costs, with wear parts and parts count. Size and weight of the motor is much bigger than squirrel cage induction motor, higher maintenance. It's not feasible for hazardous areas. And let's say the only segment where you find this uh, still in large scale is cement. You can increase the resistance in the rotor also by, by doing something in the motor rotor either by the form of the motor rotor bars. And you see here with the different forms, you achieve a different uh, uh, torque, uh, torque speed um, patterns, or you can uh, inc include, increase the resistance of the rotor bars by applying different materials, going from aluminum, copper, special copper, or a certain uh, brass. Um, you can do this, is higher costs, you have a bad efficiency due to the increased road resistance, which, you, which the motor sees all the time, and motor size is bigger than standard motors, sometimes uh, double the size of a normal motor. Um, what we also can do uh, is to have a so-called serial reactor. Uh, you have this circuit breaker open, this circuit breaker closed. You have the current flowing through the reactor and through, uh, through the motor. This is taking a certain part of the voltage. The motor sees reduced voltage. Uh, it is possible, but has some uh, disadvantages uh, because you still have a high inrush current um, uh, in, the, in the reactor. So the dynamic inrush current is not reduced. And this may, may lead to uh, tripping. And um, yeah, this is uh, if the, the reactor is disconnected prior of being bypassed, running motor will be reconnected at phase opposition, and motors do not like this um, as well. An additional possibility of uh, decreasing um, or uh, lowering the voltage drop in the network is to use is the use of auto transformer. It's a little bit more elegant solution than the starting reactor because it gives you more torque. Um, and you can see that the torque um, output uh, is reduced um, equivalent to the supply line current. If the supply line current is, for instance, reduced to 64%, the motor torque is also approximately 64%, which is then higher with the starting reactor. But you still have the topic that you have still the high inrush current, magnetizing current, it's large and heavy. Uh, you cannot um, readjust the starting characteristics later on once, once you have chosen a certain tap. It's complicated to change the starting parameters. Okay, you have three taps and you can have somebody go to the starting transformer and change the tappings, but this will take you half a day. So it's, it's possible you can use this in some cases, but uh, not so elegant. Coming now to uh, electronic soft starting. Here you have two possibilities. You can reduce the voltage only, or you can do reduce voltage and frequency to which I come later. If we are reducing the voltage, then you know the current will be approximately proportional to the voltage. So 80% voltage means approximately 80% current. And the power 
uh, and the rating is always proportional to um, current times voltage. That means torque is proportional to the square of the voltage. That means reducing the voltage to to eighty percent means gives you a proportional torque of approximately sixty four percent. This is important to know. So. How does an electronic soft starter work? What you have here is, let's say, an example. You have incoming from the feeder, you have an isolator switch if needed, you have fuses, and you have a vacuum contactor, which we call line contactor. Then we have uh, the electronic soft starter with the control electronics, and you have here the bypass contactor. So how is soft starting going on? Uh, this one is closed. This one is closed and the bypass is open. You are starting then the uh, electric motor via the soft starter um, until the bypass later on is closed. The soft starter, the electronics in principle, um, consists of two anti-parallel thyristors where this one is responsible for the positive half wave and this for the negative half wave. And um, the voltage is increased in that way that you are increasing the firing angle of the thyristors. And with this, you have more period of time where the motor sees voltage, within, which is in principle then gradually increasing the voltage. And when you have the zero crossing, meaning the full half wave, the thyristor is giving the full uh, current and voltage uh, to the motor, which is called what, what we call zero crossing. Here you can see two examples of uh, what is happening in a motor with uh, respect to starting torque when you are applying different uh, current limit uh, values. In this case, it's uh, 450 percent. There, there is still quite some margin between the reduced torque and the torque speed curve of the load. And here it is uh, reduced. And this reflects back and has consequences in the starting time. In this case, for this particular example, it is uh, 10 seconds versus 22 seconds. So what is happening with electronic soft starter when it is coming to the voltage? Um, you are increasing the voltage from uh, zero to approximately uh, 70%. And then you are increasing the voltage gradually in order to keep the current in the soft starter constant. And this is because the current in the motor is naturally falling to a certain value. And once the soft starter and the motor have reached, let's say, a current which is less than soft starter, then the voltage is increasing. You can see the same um, on the current side. You are increasing the current applying constant current, in this case, 350% for the whole period of time of starting, 24 seconds, and then the current is falling naturally to a nominal current and the bypass is closing. Um, some effects on the electronic soft starting, um, you see here on the left-hand side, um, the electrical stress, especially on the winding you are switching on, and the winding is seeing uh, a certain electrical and mechan mechanical stress and also all the mechanical equipment. You have quite a mechanical shock. Uh, you have a torque which is uh, higher than nominal torque and it takes some time till the, electric, uh, till the mechanical equipment is uh, back to normal. With soft starting, you are avoiding both stress on the winding and stress on the mechanical equipment. I compare this always to uh, all of you will have observed a pupil or a, a learner in a driving a car with gear shift. Uh, in the first instances, um, the, uh, the student is letting the coupling come too quick and the car is lurching forward. Okay, it works, the car drives, but it's not nice for the entire drivetrain of the car, for the coupling, for the gearbox. A smooth starting is that what we want. And this is what the soft starting is providing, regardless of whether it is IGBT starting or normal soft starting. Um, 
coming to frequency start and RGBT starting. What you see here is a torque speed curve of an asynchronous motor. That's the black curve. Uh, here you see the current curve. Here you see the highest point of torque. It's called breakdown torque. Here you see the load curve at full load or reduced load. And this is against speed or frequency. On the left side of the breakdown torque, the current is much higher than nominal um, current. And here on this side, you see that the current is approximately proportional to the, uh, to the torque which is needed. So here the current is approximately proportional to the load. And here the current is independent of the load. So what does frequency starting do? So in this case, you see you are reducing the frequency and you are shifting this point, this stable point of the breakdown torque to the left. That means you are always on the higher side of the breakdown torque. And that means you have uh, always a high torque at a low current. So this gives you a smoother starting. The thing is the VFD part of the RGBT starter is much smaller than the motor size because as I said before, uh, the load is very often starting unloaded. And that means the VFD portion is approximately um, similar in size to the load during starting and not the full size of the motor. What you need to do to correctly size a drive start or a VFD starter is, I mean, I said the current is approximately to the torque, but when the starting power is much lower than the motor power, the DST size is not exactly proportional. What does this mean? Here you have an example of a motor, let's say in this case, it was 12 megawatt. And you see here that the efficiency and power factor are getting worse with smaller rating. So that means the current is no longer, this would be the theoretical curve, the red curve, but here in this case is getting higher. So the, and secondly, you also have tolerances of the efficiency and the power factor. So that means here you have an efficiency of 97.5%. With the tolerances, you have only 97.3%. So which is telling you that the efficiency is getting worse. And also the same is applicable for the power factor. Power factor nominal calculated 0.92, but uh, without tolerances, let's say really, really guaranteed is 0.9. And this is more applicable in the part load values. And that means the, the reference value for the current, which in this case was 772 amps for the 25% uh, value is in this case, really 954 amps. Okay, um, the tolerance value is 238 amps. And this is the value which I have to minimum achieve with a drive start. If I had chosen this value, I would be wrong by 10 amps. It can make a difference. Secondly, what is the second challenge is that a VFD type starter cannot produce the full torque and the full current at zero frequency. Uh, here you have a limitation that the drive start or any VFD starter can produce only 70% of uh, the starting current of, the, of its nominal current. And in case if you have, let's say a high starting uh, load, like for instance, a ball mill or so, you have to take great care to correctly size the drive start yet, that you develop enough current and with it, with what I have said before, also enough torque. So this you have to consider when sizing the drive start, but once you are doing this, uh, you have done the right thing. So um, this is, uh, let's say what you see, what you see here um, is the uh, various methods of what I have said before, direct online, slip ring, low starting current motor, reactor, auto transformer, soft starter and drive start. And you have here a typical cost comparison. This is subjective of what I have experienced in some cases. You might have special cases where this is differing. 
um, there is not, let's say, the um, uh, method to start electric motors, and you might have um, different requirements. If you have, let's say, a requirement that you are on a platform and you have space constraints, constraints, you might not have the luxury to install additional uh, starter because you have uh, limited uh, space. You might want to accommodate in the electric motor and you choose the low starting current motor, uh, which is having a worse efficiency on a platform with availability and with part counts, it might not matter. If you have air separation, where the only input value is electrical energy, efficiency is in fact the uh, topic here. There you will choose a starter that is not affecting the motor efficiency, and you might land in a different uh, starting method. The thing is, we are always looking out for our customers to find, let's say, the best starting solution, and it might differ from case to case. Okay, now coming to uh, the drive start, our product, this is IGBD based MV soft starter. And this is, um, let's say here I have again, the classic soft starter technology, which is reduced voltage starting, which is fixed operating frequency. And this is um, the torque and current is uh, in direct ratio to the voltage. Torque is square law uh, according to the current and to the voltage. And uh, reducing voltage is good for most applications. Um, well, you are reducing the current and still have enough torque. But um, in some cases, um, it is not. And we can do uh, currents up to 3000 amps at 13.8 and even 15 kV, which would land us at. Uh, powers and uh, ratings of up to 48 megawatt. Um, okay, classic soft starter, I mentioned it before, how this is working is with anti-parallel thyristors, you are increasing the voltage gradually. And here you see it, um, you, are, you do not have a current limit, and the uh, voltage and uh, current is increasing, then falling back to normal. And from here, the normal process for the customer is beginning. Um, one example, motor and torque and current and so on. What you see here is the current at uh, full voltage, current at reduced voltage, and the vice versa here for the torque. Full torque, reduced torque. Here you have a portion of the torque speed curve where you have to take attention. Starting current here is uh, six times inominal. In this case, we limit it to 4.3 inominal. Um, if we have high torque and low current, this is not possible with the SCR, with the classic soft starter technology. Also, a question, why to choose variable frequency? If you have torque demands uh, at zero speed, where the torque is higher than other coronal starting torque, you see here um, the starting torque in this case is 0.7. You had a torque demand of over one. This is not possible uh, with a classic soft start. In this case, you need to apply IGBT and frequency starting. Here you see an example of a starting calculation uh, for an IGBT compared to SCR. Um, in this case, the nominal current was eight, or the reduced current already was 800%. And with this heavy duty application with a high inertia, we landed at 67%. Um, second starting time, 800% of starting current. And with an IGBT starter, we could reduce it in this case to 1.2 I nominal with a similar starting time. So that is the advantage of a IGBT starter. Um, as I said before, you can start high inertia loads with high torque um, demands. We can apply a low starting current. Sometimes you have only generator supply and the generator itself is mostly deemed a weak network. And we can eliminate also peak demand penalties, which are imposed by municipalities and by authorities. So here you see, let's say, 
how a typical drive start is looking like, let's say, uh, from the components, you have an incoming uh, transformer, multi-winding, you have low voltage IGPT, low voltage cells, and you have the outgoing uh, cell, which is going then to the motor. And it's a dry type transformer on the incoming side. Between the transformer and the IGBTs, there is no additional cabling uh, necessary. We are utilizing here the latest 1.7 kV uh, IGBTs, which is a uh, uh, very high voltage compared to what is near really the output voltage of the IGBT, it's low voltage. And we can achieve, let's say, from 18 pulse up to uh, 54 pulses, uh, very low harmonics, and adhering to the IEEE uh, 519 regulations, um, the newest edition. Um, with the IGBT starter comes also a switch gear portion. I come to it uh, in some moments. And with our um, PO gear type, medium voltage switch gear, we are delivering a solution that is then a complete solution, which is giving you safety and it's modular. We can uh, uh, apply it to uh, various configurations, either multi-start or many motors to be started with the same drive start or single motor solution, which is giving you, let's say, a cost advantage. Um, from a operational point of view, we have a user-friendly HMI which is programmable, uh, which can connect to many um, communication systems of a customer. This is modular. This is the main controller uh, for the drive start. It's called Blue Box. It's digital HMI remote IO units, with, which save you a lot of uh, cabling issues within the drive start. Hence, it is uh, cost sen sensitive and it's conforming to uh, all the global standards. So the principles are, we are starting at very low uh, current. Um, in the most applications, uh, maximum nominal currents. Okay, it's different if you have, let's say a ball mill, then it is higher. We have much higher torque available. Uh, we are re reducing with this heating in the motor rotor. Remember what I said in the beginning, you have a very high starting current in the beginning with asynchronous starting. And with this, you have nearly unlimited number of starts per hour. It is a little bit limited. Why is this? Um, this is because of the driven machine. If you are starting a compressor with a high inertia and you stop the start, then you have to wait until the compressor is braked uh, to zero speed. And this is usually taking some minutes. So this is the natural limit of the number of starts uh, per hour, but theoretically, the drive start can do it uh, in an unlimited way. We have synchronized opening of the bypass also for soft stop. So that means sometimes in pump you need a soft stop. This means you have to extend the braking time in order, in order to eliminate, eliminate the water hammering effect. Water hammering is if you have, let's say, a water column of the uh, on top of the pump and you are braking too abrupt, um, then you have can, can have mechanical resonances uh, in the system which are destroying the pump and the piping. And with the soft stop, you are eliminating exactly this effect. Closed transition, it's air-cooled system um, and we give you all the values that are needed for uh, uh, for sizing, let's say, the AC in the switchgear room, but it's usually not much because you have the losses during the starting period, which is usually less than one minute, and that's it. Low maintenance schedule uh, uh, on the bypass. When the bypass is on, the modules, the IGPD modules are not in operation, and we also have, let's say, simple multi-start or stop design philosophy. Okay, what you can see here, is the closed transition. On top, you see here the motor current. And here see the current with, uh, let's say, the inverter feeding. And from here on, uh, you have the feeding, uh, let's say, via the network. That means when the bypass kicked in, and here the current of the inverter is then going to zero. 
Uh, here you can see it uh, with a little bit higher resolution. I have a synchronized soft stop in this case. We are transferring back um, to the inverter. Uh, here you have normal network supply. Here you have the uh, inverter supply and there is really no spike or no bump and it's really very smooth transition. Um, what are design philosophy when it is coming to the topology? You have here the drive start, you have here the incoming. This is the so-called network bus. You go on here. Here's a separator switch. You go into the drive start into the IGBT portion. Here's the variable frequency and here you have the starter bus. And you can start consecutively motor after motor with these uh, bypasses or in some cases, customers prefer to have the bypass on their own. That means you are connecting um, each motor with the external bypass coming from uh, the customer. Here you see the multi-start design philosophy uh, also, let's say, on the HMI. You have a single power source, one inverter, and multiple motor starting, which is in principle what I have shown before. But sometimes customers has two power sources, one inverter and many motors. And also for this, we have a ready solution. Um, and it is just to select what is needed. And in this case, customer wanted to have power supply redundancy. Uh, King's class is if you have, let's say, two inverters. Um, because two inverters nearly never will fail at the same time. That gives you nearly 100% of availability. Also possible with our uh, predefined um, topologies when it is coming to multi-start. Uh, here I have one, one power supply, one inverter, and one SCR starter. Also possible uh, with uh, our control module. Sometimes you have starter redundancy, inverter, and SCR. Also possible two power sources, two inverters, that's what I said before, multiple motor starting, full redundancy inverter and power supply with the highest availability, if and when needed and asked for. Okay, drive start, some uh, uh, words about the dimensions. Okay, 3.3 kV for the inverter dimensions. Uh, the biggest one, 5.5 MVA, 962 amps, which is unusual in this kind of voltage, but the height would be uh, 3 meter with 7.4 meter and depth 1.7 meter. But let's say if we're talking about the smaller, uh, where you see more, the 3.3 is uh, height 2.5 meter, 3.5 meters width, depth uh, 1.3 meter, 4.16 kV, which is interesting for the United States. Uh, in the smaller ratings, 2.5 meter height uh, with 2.6 meters and 1.9 meters depth. Please forgive me, I have not transferred this uh, into uh, imperial dimensions, uh, inch and feet, uh, but you can do the math uh, on, your, on your own. 6.6 .6 kV, which is forming, let's say, the largest part um, uh, of our, let's say, inverter portions here going from height 2.46 meter up to 3.1 in the very big portion, 1.6 meter depth here. And this remains more or less uh, constant. In 11 kV is another voltage, which we see very often in the world. And the smallest one, 2.5 uh, meter height, 3.7 meter width, smallest one, depth 1.7. Depth remains more or less constant and goes up to a height of 3.3. And 16 meter, that is really the monster here, 18.3 MVA. Approximately output is 15.3 uh, uh, megawatt. It can be higher because very often it is synchronous motors and you start synchronous motors with inverter starter with unity power factor. So that gives you then if a synchronous motor even a higher uh, megawatt uh, or horsepower rating here. Okay, just to give you a practical example, something that we have um, uh, quoted recently. Here you see, in principle, the topology of the sweet curve portion and the IGBT starter. You come in from the line from the customer. Um, you have here a vacuum circuit breaker. Um, 
um, this is uh, the bypass. You have here vacuum circuit breaker protecting and connecting to the IGPT starter. Output of the starter going into uh, output reactor with 3% uh, impedance. You have here a vacuum contactor, um, then feeding to, to the motor. Motor is starting. Um, then you close the bypass and open this as motor is at the network. All the switching elements here are withdrawable with uh, earthing switch um, uh, possibilities in order to have LSC to be uh, rating here for the for the inverter that when the motor is running you can do some maintenance work here. Uh, switch gear portion is looking here like this. You have here two VCBs and one vacuum uh, contactor. Uh, the total length is uh, 1400, 2.2 meter and the width uh, or the depth is 1.4 meter. You have a, need a little bit of rear access for connecting the cables and the front access is clear for emergency route and for uh, operating uh, here. And the IGBT portion is looking like this. In this case, 8.3 meters long, uh, 1.5 meters deep, 500 millimeters to the back for uh, maintenance to the side, 600 millimeters and 600 but this can also be reduced if and when needed. Um, one word about cost saving drive start versus VFD. Normally, you know, and it is normal that with the VFD you save energy. And this is very much true when it's coming to applications that need variable frequency. Then surely, surely you will save energy with uh, operating a pump at, at uh, variable frequency, that's for sure. But in fixed speed applications, some customers want to have a full uh, power VFD and this VFD continuously running. Um, and then it starts that you can save uh, money. If you have, for instance, a 400 kilowatt motor with 4% uh, losses, you have 16 kilowatt uh, losses uh, on the motor uh, when driving with VFD. And um, this is 8.4 or $8,400 per year, makes in 15 years, 126,000 uh, US dollar saving. Here we have a little bit uh, more elaborated calculation on this. Uh, here we have a 500 kilowatt motor saving over 20 years is $312,000 for a 1500 kilowatt motor. It's uh, already uh, nearly a million US dollar and 2.5 megawatt motor is uh, 313,000 um, uh, US dollar. So it's worth think about, thinking about what is really needed. So again, uh, IGBT based medium voltage uh, soft starter is optimized when you need high torque at a low starting current. Um, it's available for variable torque loads like pumps, compressors, fans, but also for fixed torque loads like uh, mills uh, or extruders. And you can do with it multiple motor, soft start and uh, soft stop. Um, here you see again, let's say the outline of a single motor drive start where the switch gear portion is uh, connected directly to the VFD portion or multi-start in this case, uh, where you have here also, let's say the SCR starter connected to it. Some examples of what we have done with uh, drive start here, it was a wind tunnel by Solcon Industries. It was with a centrifugal compressor with 40 atmosphere pressure. Motor was from Siemens, 7.1 megawatt, 6.6 uh, .6 kV. Compressor was from Cameroon. Uh, the motivation was for it, um, we, we needed to avoid any stress on the network. And maximum current during 25 seconds start was 400 amps, which is only 55% of uh, nominal current of the motor. Another application was for screw compressors. Screw compressors do have a constant torque. In this case, it was multi-start 
one drive start for two motors, starting current lower than no nominal motor current, high torque at starting. Uh, you remember the constant torque, synchronized bypass, 125 amp motor. Sugarcane Crusher is an application from Indonesia, 1700 uh, kVA motor, 3.3 uh, kV. The Sugarcane Hammer Crusher, as you see here, um, is from the torque demand, not so much because it is running up empty, but it is giving you a hell of a lot, hell of a long uh, starting time. And this is why the drive start was used here. Water pumping station, um, we needed a very low starting current in order to uh, protect the network. Requirement was the voltage drop needed to be less than 2%. And we, need, and we had a very long starting time with this. This is an application in Israel, which I have seen uh, personally, and it is working very well. You see here um, the, uh, the current uh, for, for the motor. And um, here you see the current of the inverter, smooth uh, transition and working to the fullest satisfaction of uh, the customer. Ball mill, I mentioned before, you need to have high torque. Um, availability so this was a matter of sizing of uh, the drive start here was high torque uh, application and one other application was for instance here in russia for a compressor for an oxygen plant seven megawatt motor 760 amp and we needed a relatively high starting current starting period was uh, 43 seconds and motivation for this was uh, on the one hand side weak electrical network, but also confined space. And with our product, we could uh, really fit into that confined space and drive start was here the right solution. So I have come to an end with my presentation about uh, the drive start and uh, starting uh, methods. And I would like to invite for questions. Thank you so much, Christian. That was uh, very impressive, uh, very, very technical. And I know a lot of people found that helpful. Good currently not you. seeing, currently not seeing any questions. Um, here's one, uh, is this product UL listed? To a certain part, yes, and we will give you exact answer uh, via Jim. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, uh, Christian. Um, I'm sure there'll be more more questions that will get emailed um, sometime this week, and we will we will of course get those to you. And thank you all. Uh, all of the attendees for participating and all of you have a wonderful wonderful day and Christian you have a wonderful evening thank you very much and uh, thanks to, to all of you and have a good day take care all of you stay healthy